Hi, this is Sam Botstein from MachineSkills.com. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube for all our machine tutorials and check us out at MachineSkills.com. In last week's tutorial, we looked at how to use the LFO built into Machine Sampler to modulate pitch and therefore speed with a drum loop. Today we're going to look at some uses of the LFO, but we're going to focus more on this modulation envelope, which is an attack hold decay envelope, for modulating some other things with a more simple sound. I'm using this buzz edged sound, which is like a small synth hit. Now, last time with the LFO, we took a look at pitch, which can be really useful. At subtle settings with a high speed, you can get all sorts of really cool vibrato kind of things going on. At more extreme settings, it gets really crazy. This is a little unpredictable for just a synth hit like this. However, using the pan with the LFO is arguably a better choice than using the pan with the modulation envelope, and here's why. So when we have a high speed, you know, a sine wave, and the pan turned up, we're going to get this cool dubbed out sound. We can even go a little bit faster with that. You can see up here in the little VU meter, or even if we hop into the mixer mode, we can see the left and right channels moving up and down and back and forth. Now, if we were to use the modulation envelope with pan, it's going to, um, if we turn it up to the right here, it's going to start on the right and then move to the left as the envelope runs its course. This can be cool, but it becomes a nightmare to mix later, and I don't recommend it. Generally, I do things like drums and synth down the middle, at least when I'm tracking and recording them, or working on them in machine, because later I might want to apply stereo effects. However, pitch with a simple sound like this and the modulation envelope can be very powerful. So we could use automation or just manual knob turns to sort of get an interesting melody out of a single sound. One thing that's really powerful and cool with this is that we could figure out the exact percentage to give us that sort of melody that we are making, or we could sort of eyeball it or, you know, use our ears to guess and make it sort of not so accurate. This can make for a lot of inter interesting sort of seesaw effects. You'll notice that the envelope is a little bit too long, so after this note has ended and I'm moving the pitch, we actually hear it get modulated on the first note. There's all sorts of crazy, interesting things to be done here. We can also turn on the filter and then modulate cutoff the way that we would maybe inside of the synth that made the sound. We can actually combine these things to sort of hit the filter a lot harder. If we turn up the resonance close to all the way, and then we turn up pitch close to all the way, now we're actually introducing a new rhythm with a sort of really simple sound. So the filter's resonance is sort of heard on the and or the uh of one and three.
Using the modulation envelope is super easy and a really powerful way to add something to your sounds and machine. One thing I wanted to point out is um, it's really tempting to leave attack all the way at zero, but if we can reverse this, we'll actually get the pitch and the cutoff and everything kind of going up. All of this is really easy to do, it only takes a couple of seconds, so if you're using a really simple synth sound, maybe you don't even want to use Massive at the moment, all you really have to do is get out the modulation or the LFO pages and turn some knobs. I would recommend trying playing with one setting of the destinations and then trying to explore some sweet spots in the modulation envelope. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube for all our machine tutorials and check us out at machineskills.com.